Welcome everyone to the Virtual Power Teams podcast. And today we have a very exciting guest, Thomas Kirchenmeier. We've met with Thomas roughly two years ago. We were both in Bali attending an event called Running Remote where companies from all over the world were presenting their models to work remotely without an office. And I vividly remember after the event where I had a speech and um, we had a chance with, with Thomas uh, to have some drinks in the bar, in the open air bar. We had some long drinks uh, and uh, we discussed and Thomas shared his vision uh, to build a company which is based on fully remote team. A company in the event business, in the training business, which is based on a fully remote expert spread around the globe. And now uh, nearly two years down the road, uh, the company is already there. Uh, and Thomas is uh, smiling and he will share some of uh, the insights, not just for this particular company, but how to run uh, large events, remote events online and how to ensure that uh, you could do training effectively uh, remote and not just training and learn some skills, but to ensure that the performance is coming afterwards. So very pleased to welcome Thomas on board. He's, um, as I said, entrepreneur, He's a um, family man, uh, father, <laughs> and uh, welcome, Thomas. Welcome to our podcast. Please tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, so first I have to say hello. Thank you very much, Peter. It was, it's a really nice pleasure, and I have to say Grüß Gott, because I'm um, German, and I will not say Bavarian, because um, it's real German. Even the Grüß Gott is coming from the southern part. But uh, this is where I'm uh, living right now, south of Munich, in a very small village, um, and therefore... Um, yeah, it's the right thing to work remote as well, because the nature around is beautiful. And um, so this is where we started off. And I have to say, um, Bali was a real nice experience and a, and a game changer for me as well. At that time, I was working um, for one of the biggest agencies in Germany, was running the marketing and training department for this company. And in the meantime, and uh, during this time already, I had a lot of things in mind and thought always, OK, we have to do something different because um, it was at that time a very clear practice to work on, on a remote base more for the IT part of the world. So, but on, in project management, it was not something where it was a, a common um, working methodology. So this was always the goal. And I thought, mm, okay, I have to do something in this way. So this was at the end in Bali and, and running remote was at the end um, for me, the, the starting off point. Um, and yeah, I was, with the upcoming um, pandemic then um, last year, March, this was the, the second part and I finalized my, my business plan, handed over to, to the bank. And three days later, they called back and said, what do you want? Um, and, and for this business you are planning, we give you money and um, you can start off. So it was how it had to, how it had to be. And um, I was running um, for almost 20 years, my, my own event company before I went to this, to this other agency. Um, for whom I was running and um, two things were very clear you out of an entrepreneur you never do a, an employee so this was something what is matching to me in on the one hand side so I, I went back to my own company and opened the own company and the second part was um, the crisis offers the biggest uh, chances so while the pandemic was in, in fully loading and a lot of people um, also from my teams they could not work um, fully um, I was I was opening the company and I thought this is a real good idea, even though out of training and uh, what we were doing, we thought that this is the right thing to um, to also do on a remote base because um, we had quite a good business also during that time. So what are, what are we doing today? Today, the company is called Pertex. Um, you see our logo um, in, a, in a short version. The full name is Pertex GmbH. Um, and um, yeah, what we are doing is um, today, um, or where the name is coming from, perhaps on the first uh, first shot, um, it's performance through experience. And for us, it has two two meanings: performance through experience. We want to create performance on the one hand side. We want to show our experience, and we want to give experiences to our uh, clients, and um, that they get impact through the experience that we that we offer. And and from there. And from that side, this is um, our our driven point, and um, we have a, a certain way how our services are defining today. Um, what is 
very funny right now what you cannot see but my kids are knocking on the window from outside this is also part of remote work and that uh, that you get interrupted in, in such ways yeah. um, so sweet. our services are today um yeah we are coming from the live communication and from the events business so this is something what we do in a in a virtual way somehow as well team building um, conventions events fairs this is one part uh, we built a lot of creative content because the people that i have around me today um, is spread all over the world. That's why we are remote. I can talk a little bit about that later on as well. Um, but we are, we are conceptioning a lot of uh, uh, creative stuff for our clients. And the good thing is due to the fact that we, are, that we are based around the world, we have 24 hours conceptioning time. So um, we are faster than a lot of other companies because they have only the daytime and, and we work at the end, if we want, day and night. So this is one thing, performance and trainings. Um, the, the, the training industry is one of a real big um, industries. $350 billion um, dollars a year are turned in the, in the training business. Mm -hmm. And if you see that before the pandemic, 90% um, of that were done in live training. So there is a huge potential also for what we are doing. So e-learnings, web-based trainings, um, learning management uh, systems, certifications, all of these things, this is what we are doing as well. But we also help companies to train their, uh, to, to change their, um, their work methodology to, we help them to get this, this virtual practice and, and this digitalization. So we help them how to arrange work new out of our experience. And then there came a, um, a real big thing for us and these are the virtual, uh, venues. So mm -hmm. out of the reason that we that we saw we had have to offer new experiences and uh, a new way of interaction. Um, we and we saw how difficult it is to get the right um, virtual venues for our um, for our events. We thought, okay, it might be a good idea to to create our own one. So last year October, we started to to work on our own virtual venue. And um, if you have the time afterwards, I can show you some pictures as well. Yes. Um, and this is how we do and from where we do our, our virtual events today. So very yeah. impactful. Oh, great. Uh, a lot of things, uh, 350 billion industry and Thomas has been dedicated his life to, to this industry. Now with a new innovative remote model, please tell us, this is like a standard question, but it's very key. Why you do what you do? And maybe to add, why remote? Now, why remote events? Why remote? Why um, you are in this business? So, first of all, remote is not new for me. Um, I was somehow working remote already in the past, even though I was uh, work. I had my own event company, and I was. We were part of a big group. So I was um, the operating officer for the Liberty International Tourism Group. It's a it's a DMC group with um, 50 offices in 50 countries. And I was responsible for the operations for, the, for them. And um, I was traveling for five years. I was all over the world. I was visiting all offices. Um, we were changing a lot of things. And at the end, whenever I came back home, I was going to my own offices. On the other hand side, I was working from home. So somehow I was always remote. And when I was traveling, I was always also remote. And this was one of the reasons that I, I loved to do this. And today I have to say, um, I do not need to travel anymore. I'm permanently at home and I'm, I'm remote. So um, there's, there's one thing, I'm far more effective um, working. I have my family around me. I, have, I don't need to sit in a, in a car anymore, in a plane anymore. So since that time, I'm running minimum 40 kilometers a week. So I'm training for the next marathon as well. And um, I have a lot of positive things so that the pandemic in that case what was not the, the big change. It was just the last step of it. So and it was clear that for me, um, or when I, when I got the idea, and this was coming somehow, when I was mowing the grass outside in my garden, um, it came, some people have this when they, when they stand under the shower. So for me, it was mowing the grass and um, mowing the lawn. And, uh, and at that time I said, okay, you have to change something and you have to do um, to change our industry as well. It, because tourism and, and events was, is somehow such a, um, a long-term industry and um, nobody was able and willing to change anything. So digitalization and, and digital transformation in this way was a, was a real impact that nobody was doing. And we had to, to work on this and therefore um, 
for me, this was one of the keys. And that's why I said, this is what I want to do. And I want to change something for myself. And I want to create a new way of working. And I want to not only have colleagues sitting next to me, I want to have the colleagues sitting around the world because this is what I loved while traveling, having colleagues all around the world. This intercultural exchange was something very special for me. Excellent. Now, people before COVID were concerned that, you know, e-learning is not effective. Maybe just people just call and they were, as you said, out of this uh, big industry, kind of billion, 90% was live. And now they were forced to go um, online and to do even hybrid sessions or um, remote learning in a facilitated workshop format. But from your perspective as really running big events, how can you ensure that the learning is really taking place in remote training? How would you yeah. ensure the learning element? Um, how you ensure it is um, working with the right tools, let's say, on the one hand side and, and arranging it in a new way. So um, the trainings are far more interactive than they were before in a, in a, live, uh, in a live training. You see the person, you see the trainer, you can get the feelings, you see what he's doing with his hands. You, and as a trainer, you see what the people are doing, you see their mood and everything. In a, and in a, in a virtual training, you don't have this. And one of the big um, fears and one of the big dangers is that everybody is always only one click away. Um, but nevertheless, the big corporations, they need to have their trainings on, in terms of product trainings and sales trainings and, and such things. So we had to ensure um, that we find the methodology that we, um, how we make sure that, that there is also um, the, the performance driven um, part and how we get the impact in, in the training. So what we have done is to change the whole setup of such a training. So it's, um, it, it's a different um, agenda and it's different tools that we are using. And we are using for, um, for example, a, a virtual tool that is clearly showing you and, and giving you also the, um, the way that you see what the, the, the participant has on the, on the first platform. So you see if he's working on his email or if he has the, um, the training tool open. So, and if they have the training tool not open and they work on something different, gaming or whatever, then the trainer is um, reaching out to them and asking them the next question. So, um, so therefore you make sure that, um, that you get them you have a different way of, of doing your certifications. You have um, a, another learning control tool. You make it very much interactive. You do um, pollings, votings, and, and permanently you, you have interaction with the, with the people far more than in the trainings before. You do, but what you do in the same way, um, you have breakout groups, you have um, all of these things where they have to talk to each other. And um, what is um, the good experience out of it? is that people are coming together from a, from a bigger area. So you don't have only 10, 15 people um, together. You have them as well because we, the real trainings we do in very small teams, um, but we mix them differently so that they get more interaction also with other people. And they have to fulfill a certain task to get their certificate at the end. So this is how we ensure it at the end. A lot of interaction, the interaction technology allows for even more than life. And then you have this element, big brother watching you, the trainer. Can see a little bit, yes. Between you. Yeah, it's one of the big things is, of course, data protection. And we have to make sure that everything is correct. And it's one of the good things being here in Germany that uh, we have to do it. Um, our servers are in Germany um, and everything is compliant to GDPR. Mm. So um, in, in a way, we, we, we um, do a lot of things um, or we, we check a lot of things and track a lot of things. We nevertheless make absolutely sure that um, IT security and data protection is taken care about. Excellent, perfect. Now, um, you run large scale events with thousands of online participants. In fact, we have one and thank you for inviting me to speak on your Medinnovation, it's around medical, uh, which is coming now in the end of March. So what is the secret of large scale events? How can you, you know, get so many people together? What, what are the, the secrets of organizing a successful large scale event? Um, now, the, the marketing is the, is the main topic, let's say, and innovation is for us a new format, a completely new format. And it's, uh, it's an innovation forum driving around digital health and future health. So we are very happy that we have this, this format because we learn a lot out of it because so far, um, we were always working for clients. And now we have together with two other companies, um, 
we are starting our own format that we want to run fully virtual. We are already planning a second one in September, and um, we, we plan to keep it virtual, perhaps in, in a year or two, it might be hybrid. We will, we will see how this, this will be, but there's one big thing and, um, and how we ensure to have a, a, a bigger audience is um, from the second time onwards, it will be international. So now we have a German version, but um, our goal is to, to run it international. And we have and the advantage is that we, in the virtual world, we have a far bigger reach. So uh, we don't need to look only in, into Germany and into areas where people have to travel. Um, we can look all around the world and the, the globalization or people from, from anywhere in the world are far closer to us because they can participate. Mm -hmm. The accessibility um, for the people is much easier. They don't need to sit into a plane. They don't need a hotel. They don't need um, time for travel and, and to spend because all of these virtual events, they're also far shorter than the, than the live events. Because you have to pack your, your agenda in a different way that you say, okay, um, uh, keynotes are shorter. There, there are no 90 minute keynotes um, sessions anymore because you lose the people. So everybody is getting more for less. And, um, and this is ensuring this in the same way. On the other hand side, um, what is a, a big impact for us as well, and we learned this on running remote, by the way, that we are able to give people access to our events that normally would not be able to, to access such events. If they are disabled, if they are not able to travel, if they are not perhaps also willing or because out of fear, um, fear of traveling and, and, and um, flights and such things. So we can now include these people to our events and we do and we leave a far better um, global uh, and green, green footprint out of uh, sustainability reasons. And all of this together um, makes us at the end easy to, to load such events with a lot of people. And um, the virtual event at the end um, doesn't has a, as a it's not having a limit. Any congre congress center or hotel or wherever you do events so far, or we did them, they're always um, reaching a limit. We don't reach a limit at the moment because we, it doesn't matter if we have 100 or 10,000 uh, participants. It's Excellent. it's working very well. And the tool is flexible. 10,000. The tool is flexible, yes. <laughs> and it's running well, and it's running in the um, not in the meantime. So. We had um, when we were creating our virtual venue mm -hmm. um, in October, we had a we had a target because we had a, um, a kickoff to deliver for Sanofi in January, and um, for this kickoff, the, the virtual venue had to be uh, ready and perform. And there was throughout this um, four days events, there were was nothing that um, was blocking us away. The platform was running stable, and everything was good at that point. So excellent. Excellent. Now you've named your company uh, Pertex Performance Through Experience. So I'd like to explore. We did, we covered how to ensure remote learning and online learning, but how can you ensure that the learned really goes into performance? That mm -hmm. the bottom line of the company will benefit from from the learned. Yeah, we are um, we are looking at new measuring tools, of mm -hmm. course, um, and an impact of of such learning tools is today everything. So, and this is also going away um, with this, or along with, with this new communication formats and tools. And together with our um, virtual venue, we have a, a big advantage that we can put all this interaction tools um, to our virtual venue because we are not limited. So in a, in a Zoom conference or in a Teams conference, we're always limited to one um, system in our virtual venue. We can put everything what we want. So um, this is, something where we have a far better learning control and an impact control, and we can follow the people far deeper. And, and if we have now in our events also um, exhibitions and such things, we can track people far better than before. And, and we make sure that we interact with the people on, the, on their interest and not on a, so it's not a raining shower anymore on information, what we put on them afterwards. It's very dedicated and um, we make it in the, in the right way because one thing we, we need to understand from, our, from the information today, so we can get any information at any time of the day, doesn't matter, uh, morning, evening, or also in the middle of the night, and in any depth we want. So if either we want to have a, a detailed information or just a, we want to just flow um, over some information. So um, we choose today what we want to hear, and exactly in the right, in, in this way, we give the people also the, uh, the possibilities to learn and, and, and to participate. So, and with this um, measuring that we put on top of it, we are able to increase performance um, on the one hand side. On the other hand side, 
um, we are able with our live streams and, um, and how we do this with our studios to also create the emotion from the, um, from the live events. It's not the same like in a live event because you don't have the people around you. you there, there are clearly some things missing, but nevertheless, um, we are with this uh, really target um, in, in our mind um, to create impact and um, performance. Uh, we are able to, to get this um, transported and transferred to the clients. And we give them more information about their clients, their employees, and, and whatever they want to know. So, but it's a long discussion with the clients because what we need to know is exactly what they want to reach um, with, the, with the event. And these are long, long, long talks. And this is our consultancy service um, today that we find measurable um, possibilities how to um, create our events. Excellent. So you can target much better online. You can yeah. measure a lot of things for sure. Measuring the right things will ensure the performance in the right Correct. way. Correct. Now, you are running now a, a remote team and, and, and big uh, global events. Uh, what, from your perspective, and, and the landscape is changing as we speak, you know, companies, new normal, much more remote. What, from your perspective, will be the success factors for leading remote teams in the newer future? Yeah. Um... At the end, um, it, it's not so far away from, from what we had before, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But running uh, remote teams also um, requires some very vital things. And um, this, I'm, what I've learned in, during my time is that you give freedom to the people as well, that you trust them, um, that you are very transparent and, and leadership in this way um, functions in a, in a different way. So you need to allow the people to learn and to um, to make them mis their own mistakes as well and if you're able to to allow this and you're not um, the last micromanager um, on the world then um, you're also creating success um, in, in virtual teams so um, this is what i always tell my people um, i cannot control all of you and i don't even want this and because when i'm sleeping you're working most of the time as well um, when they're either east or west away from us and one one of our um, yeah, major team colleagues is based in Brooklyn in, in the US. So he is in the evening working and I'm not there, but um, if you don't have the trust, it will not work. And if you don't um, let them do, it will also not work. But on the, and on the other hand side, and this is what we always learn, and this is what I've learned from day one on, on uh, running teams in a, in a remote way and also before, is that you have to give them full trust and full transparency. And this is definitely helping. Trust, freedom, micromanagement is not an option. Yes. No, it's not an option at all. That's very yeah, true. Now, um, you have many, as you said, uh, global events and now running on your own global remote events. What was your most exotic experience with remote teams so far? The exotic? I don't know if I have a... a or right. exciting, another E word, exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably um, yeah, exciting. Exciting is at the moment every day because um, at the end, to be very honest, um, I run a virtual event every day with my team, and um, and to keep them on track and to to discuss with them also, um, yeah, not only not only working stuff, but that you have the feeling of of having a family around, a working family and and a team around you. Um, this is right, really exciting. It's and it's exotic in the same way because. Um, when we when we talk with companies, they have um, they are discussing how difficult it is to send people um, to the home office. So we have one company. They are saying we we send um, out of our ten thousand people in um, we send six thousand to the home office. They miss their working home, and um, so we are telling them we build your new um, virtual home now with our with our platform because it's not only a virtual venue for events; it's also a virtual venue for communication for a three sixty five days communication tool so and, and this is very exciting and, um, and a very exotic thing that we are now able to provide them um, with a tool where they can um, yeah, enjoy visits from clients um, where they have all the departments um, in the virtual venue and, and and this is really something very nice but the, the really exciting experience is to have the team around me um, nevertheless every day doesn't matter where they are based yes fantastic now, um, what is, you mentioned trust and 
uh, and freedom. But what is your number one advice? You have to give one advice for somebody now embarking to lead uh, a global team or dispersed remote team. What would that be? Yeah, the, the, the real first advice is forget that you're able to control everything. So mm -hmm. I, I learned this and I'm, and I'm not having sleepless nights anymore that I'm not able to control everything. So this is really, because it's in the same way. And if you are able to do this and to give, this is the, the first step into trust, the first step also into transparency, because if you're not transparent, you cannot stop to control. Um, so you need to give them all information. They need to know everything and they need to understand that you trust them. And this is, uh, it, this is the, the, let's say the basis um, where it's all built from. Mm -hmm. Trust and full transparency. Thank you. What do you what do you read or listen at the moment? What I'm reading and listening, um, yeah, as as always, I, I listen to your podcast <laughs> you. first thing, um, and it's always interesting if you if you learn about other people as well. So it, this is one of the things because when I'm going running, I have the time to listen to uh, such podcasts. On the other hand side, there is um, one thing, and I think this is still um, what all of us is. Uh, all, all of us are looking for is um, the, the developments in, in the pandemic time now around um, COVID-19. So it's something what I'm also listening a lot, to be very, frankly honest, um, sometimes perhaps even too much. Um, but this is something what is what is keeping me up up to date and uh, or where I keep myself up to date. Because um, yeah, with now with the Medinnovation and with all of this uh, digital health projects and, and health in general, um, this is clearly something where we are looking at. And I think it's not letting us go in general. And from the time before, um, when I when I opened um, Pertex and I was listening to all these podcasts that were available about um, remote teams and how to, to run them and um, and all of this, it, it changed now very much to, um, let's say, to, to pandemic stuff because yeah, family first, as always, and you want to have the best for the family and you're you're looking, am I able to send my kids to school? Um, how is it when, when we meet with other people? These are, of course, something where we are. And of course, and one of the things we are all not too proud about at the moment or too proud of at the moment is how we run the pandemic in Germany and in terms of vaccinations and, and testing. So therefore, it's something where we are, of course, looking at. And at the, at the moment, with one of our partners, we're also working on a on a project and waiting just for the next release step um, from our government. And then we are able together with them to um, vaccinate companies um, in a big number. And this is what we're waiting for. So there are hopefully coming some good news during the next days. Thank you. And my last question to you, um, it is a bit philosophical. What do you think is the future of virtual teams? Now, for me, it's the future. And, um, and I see a very good future. And we see this even though, and, and, and the pandemic in the same way has proven us that um, virtual teams and, and working remote and from the home office, this has a real future because um, the companies and the big corporations, they are stopping to rent big offices. They are going back, they get more sustainable in, in this way as well. So we, we get more housing in our cities, um, less offices, more housing. And we don't, there's, there's something that is um, yeah, that we don't need to move all to the cities anymore. So we can live where we are. If I'm looking out of the window, it's green. Not yet green because it's not yet spring enough. But um, this is something what what is giving a far better, bigger freedom um, of work, of life. And therefore, I see this um, very much coming up and even more coming up in the future. So and even also now um, for the big corporations, they need to think how they do it because um, after the end of the pandemic, um, they will nevertheless stay um, remote in in a lot of areas because people, um, yeah, some are made for working remote, some not. So you need to you need to give it um, in the right um, conversion that you say, if you are able to work remote and if you want, if you're willing to do so, do it, do what you like most, and um, because then you are most productive. So it has. A future and in my opinion it's getting more and more um, so as you say virtual teams are the future <laughs> absolutely virtual sure. power teams are for me absolutely the future this i will not change back anymore so uh, this is 100 percent clear we, we started as a, as a virtual team 
And for us, it was very natural from day one, even we all came from, from uh, office jobs somehow as well. But um, if, you, if you ask our people at the moment, it's clear we, on, we only do this now for uh, nine months, but if you ask them, they all will not go back to the office anymore. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you very much, Thomas. Great insights on Thank you very much. Large remote events, running large remote teams, ensuring online learning really pays back. Um, it was great having you. Have yeah. a fantastic day. Thank you very much, Peter. It was my pleasure. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Thank you. <clears throat> All the best to the community as well out there. Bye-bye. Yeah.